Hey, Horse Center fans, sorry we've been away for a few weeks, but Matt and I are back. Matt and we're talking Future Stars Friday of the Breeders' Cup. Hey, excellent, Brian. It's good to be back. And as Brian said, sorry we had to miss a couple weeks, but things happen. And we're ready to get our Breeders' Cup coverage rolling. Let's start with the uh, stars of tomorrow, uh, Matt. Uh, Two-year-old stars in five big races on Friday. Watch the previews right here on Horse Center. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, or at least uh, not so much lately, but uh, Matt, it's good to see you. Matt Shipman there in New Jersey. I haven't seen you in a few weeks, my friend. I know, Brian. It, it's been that way. We've texted and stuff like that, but hey. You know, here we are, ready to get our Breeders' Cup uh, coverage rolling again. Yeah, the good news is our producer, Brett Workman, is getting better. He's feeling much better. Good enough to do the show now, Matt. And we want to get in a bunch of shows now in the next two weeks, because two weeks from today, I think you know what that is, sir. Two weeks from today, we start the Breeders' Cup. Of course, it's Future Stars Friday, Friday, November 6th at Keeneland. We have five big two-year-old races, Matt. Let's jump right in, and I think we need to start with the horses that might make the starting gate for next year's Kentucky Derby. Let's talk Breeders' Cup Juvenile. $2 million, a mile and 16th, which is two turns at Keeneland, Matt. And the heavy favorite, Jackie's Warrior, has never been two turns. That is for sure. You, you've got a horse in this race in Jackie's Warrior that has probably been as, as impressive in his four starts as any horse uh, heading into the juvenile in a long time. Um, looks like he could be one of the heaviest favorites in the entire Breeders' Cup uh, uh, two-day weekend. But as you said, Brian... There is that big question mark. Four for four, one turn. Now he's going two turns. Uh, Steve Asmussen, I found it interesting that uh, after Jackie's Warrior won uh, in New York uh, prior to the Champagne, Steve Asmussen said they were going to Kentucky. They were going to the Breeders' Futurity, which is two turns. And then things changed. Jackie's Warrior went to the Champagne. One turn continued to be super, super impressive, but it just re-emphasized the two-turn question for me. Yeah, I have the two-turn question as well, Matt. Uh, first off, yeah, this son of McLean's music, uh, trained by Steve Asmussen, has just been super impressive. Four consecutive races. The first one was Churchill Downs, and that maiden race was uh, very impressive. Now, then he took it to Saratoga. Uh, I guess it was the Saratoga special and then the hopeful at Saratoga, uh, both sprints, the hopeful stretching out to seven furlong sprints, super impressive, but always on the lead and always one turn, uh, reinvestment risk, Matt was actually the favorite in jockeys warriors third race, which was the hopeful. And that came, uh, after the impressive maiden win at Churchill and the Saratoga special. So there were, there were a few doubters, but there can't be doubters anymore at one turn because he turned away reinvestment risk not only very easily in the hopeful there at Saratoga seven furlongs then he got the one mile one turn champagne at Belmont and he looked probably even better reinvestment risk really had no answers down the stretch he tried him maybe in mid stretch and Jackie Warrior Jackie's Warrior just repelled him easily and went on to win the champagne like a horse who should be four to five even money but uh, i i think the question for me is he is he going to go down as one of the best two-year-olds we've seen this century the last couple decades or is he going to stumble a little bit if he gets pressured and that second turn you know mclean's music uh there's questions for me whether this horse wants two turns physically and pedigree wise yeah, that's for sure. It, and and not only has Jackie's Warrior, you know, won impressively visually in uh, all of his starts, but his speed figures have progressed significantly in his last three starts. And and uh, in the Champagne, he put up a triple digit uh, buyer speed figure, which is very unusual for a, a two year old. But as you're saying, um, the two turn question is there. Uh, 
and there are some other interesting horses in the field. There are some other interesting horses in the field, Matt. I'm glad you said that because I want to get to essential quality now. I've I really liked what I saw from uh, this son a tap it. Now, essential quality also made his debut at Churchill Downs, and I was also very impressed. Uh, Jackie's Warrior might be a throwback to horses like War Pass and even Devil's Bag going years and years, but maybe essential quality you only have to look back as far as last year to Maxfield for a horse that essential quality might remind me of, Matt. Of course, Maxfield never got a chance to run in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile and hasn't run a whole lot since. Uh, We're hoping Maxfield is back soon. But essential quality took that sprint, that nice professional-looking sprint win at Churchill Downs and quickly parlayed it to a two-turn win. And this year, Matt, the Breeders' Futurity is the same site as the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. So that happened at Keeneland, a mile 16th. The Brad Cox training looked awfully good in winning that Breeders' Futurity. He did. Brad Cox, uh, who already in his young career does have three wins uh, in Breeders' Cup races. And and I agree, essential quality was very impressive in that race. Fans, uh, as you're watching the replay, as Brian and I are talking about this race, uh, it looked to me like essential quality basically dragged jockey Louis Saez up into contention uh, down the back stretch. It looked like Saez was trying to to hold him back and raid him and then eventually just said, hey, you know, you want to go? He let him uh, let him drag him up into contention, I think into like second, a little bit on the outside. And then he seemed to settle down uh, um, going around the turn. But uh, when asked for more down the stretch, uh, he just drew off and and uh, defeated the field soundly. All, all good descriptors, uh, including the start on the Keeneland track for uh, this son of Tappet and for a, for a Tappet to be this good as a two-year-old, we know they improve with racing. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things to like here about essential quality, and and as we get closer to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile again, two weeks from today, uh, he's he's the horse that I'm looking to uh, most forward to in this race. Jackie's Warrior, very precocious, very talented. And very may very well may wire this Breeders' Cup Juvenile as the heavy favorite, but uh, I think it's moving forward. Essential Quality is an extremely interesting horse. He looks like a horse who should be right at home with two turns, and he'll get two turns over Trackies one. So I like Essential Quality. Unfortunately, I see Jackie's Warrior as a clear favorite, Matt, and Essential Quality is the clear second choice. I don't I don't see any horse that they can bet nearly as much as essential quality as the second choice in here. And as we look down our list of maybe top contenders, uh, reinvestment risk, you know, very, very impressive uh, debut winner for train trainer Chad Brown uh, at Saratoga. And uh, he, like I said, he was actually favored in his second career race. Jockey's Warrior had already won two, uh, but he basically had the... Um, unenviable task, if you will, Matt, of chasing Jackie's Warrior around the track. Jackie's Warrior was too fast. Reinvestment risk had to try to chase him, try to stay close, and that's probably not his game. Was there enough in that debut win to think, well, maybe with different circumstances, Keeneland, two turns, maybe a little bit more pace pressure? Reinvestment risk is a is the type who can turn the tables off of two straight beatings from Jackie's Warrior. Uh, he certainly showed a lot of talent, and and Chad Brown has sort of become not just Mr. Turf, but Mr. Uh, Breeders' Cup with 15 Breeders' Cup wins to his credit already. But I think it's worth noting that in, in reinvestment risks three starts, that his three speed figures in those races were were virtually the same, which you know leads me to think I, I don't know if I can expect a big jump up in performance from this horse, um, whereas essential quality, I kind of expect a jump up uh, in performance in his next start. So as much talent as the Chad Brown runner flashed, um, I I don't know uh, if, if I expect him to be able to contend with those top two that we've been talking about. 
Yeah, and I, I think the son of Upstart's a very good horse, and, and those speed ratings, the speed figures are pretty good because he had such a good speed figure right out of the gate. But then again, it's hard to say, oh, he's going to do it now against Jockey's Warrior after the last two races. But again, there's a lot of variables that will be different in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. we got to mention Dale Romans, Matt, in these two-year-old races. Dale Romans in Kentucky always seems to be uh, one to watch, uh, more so recently in the last handful of years. And uh, he's got a son of Brody's cause who uh, uh, won his maiden at Ellis Park. And then it was let go at pretty good odds uh, on Kentucky Derby weekend in the Iroquois. And I thought it was a very big performance. I happened to bet him that day because of the odds. And second out for Romans, I thought he could improve. But I thought it was a very good performance. He went wide on the turn and really was much the best down the stretch, his second start, which was the Iroquois at Churchill Downs. Yeah, if you thought he could improve, well, uh, he did just that at uh, at 25 to 1 and, and made a huge performance uh, from his maiden race in in terms of speed figures, almost twice the number that he got uh, in, in his maiden race. And uh, uh, Romans has given him a little bit more, t- a little bit of time. Uh, after the Iroquois, uh, and if he continues to develop, uh, is certainly an interesting horse in the field. Yeah, and his, and his sire, his young sire, Brody's Cause, is a horse who did well at Keeneland. So sitting on go, another improvement. You know, the, the, those speed figures at Ellis Park, I always think, are come back a little slow. I don't think Ellis Park has the respect that it deserves uh, lately. But uh, sitting on go, big improvement in the Iroquois, and another improvement getting two turns. But she should like Keeneland. He should like uh, maybe a a very interesting horse again at decent odds in this Breeders' Cup Juvenile. There's a bunch of others, Matt, who could pop up. Uh, The horse that I uh, rounded out our top horses list was my choice to put in. Keep me at mind. He's a son of Lauban, and uh, that would make him a grandson of Uncle Mo. But Lauban is another young sire, and and they've been running so much so that Lauban is now headed to Windstar Farm. Uh, he, he's a, still a maiden. Uh, he was second in a maiden race at Churchill Downs before coming to the Breeders' Futurity. And I thought he finished with a lot of good energy when second. Never really got close, but a good finishing second behind essential quality. This is the type of horse that I usually like as a long shot to throw into the exotics in a race like the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Yeah, and he didn't get an ideal trip uh, in that race uh, either, Brian. And and he was big odds, fifty-two to one in that spot for uh, trainer Robertino Diodoro, who's known a little bit more for his success uh, in the claiming ranks. And, and even off of that good performance, where he too is another one that made a huge jump up in uh, uh, speed figures. And even after that thinking about some of the horses that we've also mentioned in here, he's still going to be a good price. Not going to be 52 to one again this time, but still going to be a good price. Oh, absolutely, Matt. I I would expect him to be more than 20 to one. And again, just a horse to keep in mind, keep me in mind, keep me in mind, keep him in mind as a, as a horse to maybe fill out your exotics in this Breeders' Cup Juvenile. That's our top five right now. Two weeks out. We'll know more in the next week. We expect, uh, uh, the early entries to come in early next week. We'll have past performances by midweek. So Matt and I look to do our next horse center uh, on Wednesday of next week, which is good, Matt. But let's go right to the Phillies. And uh, this this race is setting up pretty well where you've got a lot of Phillies, most of them undefeated, coming from different places, looking impressive. Uh, I guess we start with the Bob Baffert trained Princess Noor. She doesn't look as the fastest on speed figures, but the daughter of Not This Time has just been dominant in her three starts out in California, including the last two, which were graded stakes at both Del Mar and then Santa Anita. Yes, that's for sure, Brian. As often is the case with Baffert runners, visually impressive performances in all three of her starts. Uh, in all three of her starts, was heavily, heavily bet to be an odds-on favorite and and won by uh, impressive margins down the stretch. As you mentioned, all three of those races came up very, very light uh, in speed uh, in the speed figures, indicating that those races were not very f- run with very f- 
uh, very fast. Um, I, I must admit, in in the uh, chandelier uh, in her last start, uh, you know, she she didn't have the she didn't have an easy trip. She was bottled up uh, along the rail, uh, horse in front of her, horse out to the side of her for a good bit of the running down the back stretch, and. Um, she handled that situation well, uh, eventually found a seam to get through and, and put the field away. So that was a, that to me was a positive for princess nor, uh, you know, again, it's Baffert three for three, uh, um, you know, is probably going to be the favorite, in the juvenile Phillies, even though there are two other horses who are also three for three in the field. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. I think she's the favorite, but I don't think she'll be a heavy favorite. But those past performances look so good. Uh, speed figures make me think she's not beating much out in California, but I like the fact that she was off the lead uh, going two turns in the chandelier. And, and still, uh, she was really geared down in winning that chandelier. Uh, Simply Ravishing, Matt, is another one of the undefeated fillies that we're going to talk about. Three for three as well. And Simply Ravishing is a daughter of that. There's that sire again, Lao Ban. A daughter of Lao Ban, she won a stake uh, off the turf. She wasn't bad at all in her debut. She won this New York bred filly did. Uh, and then she won the, I guess it was the PG Johnson, which was taken off the turf. She won that for fun uh, on the dirt. But we still didn't know who she was or what she had really accomplished in that off the turf race until she got to Keeneland. And uh, she became a grade one winner and she did it in impressive style. Absolutely, for trainer uh, Kenny McPeak, who is having a fantastic year with the Phillies. And this is another one of those horses that uh, Kenny McPeak specializes in that was purchased not for not a big purchase price again by McPeak. And, and, and he pick, has picked out another quality horse, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Lauban, um, you know, uh, uh, making some noise as a freshman sire, but simply ravishing was simply impressive, uh, winning the Alcibiades and again, making progress in every start, looking a little bit better. Uh, um, you can't discount uh, this McPeak runner. Yeah, yeah. And she's got like uh, central quality. She has a two turn win over the track uh, in the major prep, a major race in its own right, but the major prep, she certainly beat better horses last time. Now she'll face even better horses this time. High turn of speed. Hard to knock her record to this point. Uh, another one that I could say the same, and maybe the fastest out of all of these, if you're looking just at the speed figures, Matt, is Day Out of the Office. Day Out of the Office is a daughter of Into Mischief. She began her career down in Gulfstream Park, but uh, you got to like what she's done since coming north to New York. Yep, three for three. Last time for uh, trainer Tim Ham, who will be looking for his first Breeders' Cup uh, victory, which which I also meant to say. Also, Kenny McPeak uh, maybe has his best chance of any year to get his first Breeders' Cup uh, victory. Sorry, I, I meant to mention that uh, earlier with simply ravishing, but uh, Tim Tim Ham has not had the chances that uh, McPeak has had. Uh, in the Frisette, uh, yeah, she was simply um, it, really impressive. Uh, again, that one-turn race, day out of the office, uh, picked up a very, very big speed figure for a two-year-old filly. Yeah, it was an impressive win. And so impressive was the win where I feel like the filly that ran second is a horse that I really like and I still like, even though... She couldn't get too close. I guess she tried day out of the office, but day out of the office was not coming back uh, off her pace running win. But v Vquist, uh, there's something about her I like, and, and, and I don't think that one turn race set up for her. I think she wants a distance, and I think she wants someone to pressure day out of the office a little bit more. But I was impressed, as I have been now, for a couple stakes races for Vquist. Of course, the race before that, she looked really good in winning the spin away, the grade one spin away up at Saratoga. Yeah, and uh, Vquist uh, is a daughter of Kentucky Derby winner Nyquist, who is also doing well uh, as a uh, young sire. Uh, Vquist is based at Parks for uh, trainer Butch Reed, who uh, had shipped uh, her up to uh, 
uh, New York for those two races and uh, speed figures have been progressing in every race. And uh, so if Brian, your uh, analysis is correct, that this is a horse who's going to do better at two turns. Um, she just adds to uh, what looks like a pretty deep juvenile fillies. Yeah, Matt, you, you hit it on the head. It is a pretty deep and impressive looking field for the juvenile fillies. And Vequist, I think, is going to be ignored a little bit coming off off a loss in the Frisette. She's only one for three, although I liked her maiden race where she just missed by a nose. Uh, and the top three we mentioned are all three for three. So I think Vequist could end up nearing 10 to one in here. And, and, and you ask me right now, she's the horse I, I, I'm looking forward to betting in the juvenile fillies. Another one we need to mention, Dale Romans. Daughter of Uncle Mo, that's girl daddy. She uh, likes sit and go, parlayed a maiden debut win at Alice Park to a much more important win at Churchill Downs. Yeah, and like her stable mate who won uh, the Iroquois, uh, girl daddy won the Pocahontas for Dale Roman. So once again, as you said, uh, 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 he's. Uh, uh, Romans is coming into the Breeders' Cup looking good in the juveniles. Um, Girl Daddy uh, had a, made a nice nice progression uh, in speed figures also and has got uh, room to grow. Yeah, and I have a feeling, just like I said about Vequist, I, I have a feeling that both of Dale Romans' undefeated two-year-olds sitting on go in the juvenile and Girl Daddy in the juvenile fillies are going to be slightly ignored with some of those big names ahead of them. So the juvenile Phillies, Matt, also $2 million a mile, 16th on the dirt there at Keeneland. Does look like a race to be excited about. Let's hit the turf, Matt Schiffman. Are you ready to hit the turf? Let's get some grass. All right, let's 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 do the grass. Matt, uh, oh boy, pronunciation time. Mutas. Mutasabek. Mutasabek. All right, yeah, th thanks for the help. Mutasabek. Mutasabek, trained by Todd Pletcher, a son of Into Mischief on the turf, Matt, uh, looked good when he got to Keeneland. And what's interesting about that win in the Bourbon is he was last early, and uh, Kurt Becker even had some fun uh, as he was just rolling wide down the lane, gobbling up ground, much the best in the Bourbon from last early. Yeah, and as you said, Todd Pletcher, let me tell you, Brian, um, it's getting to be for, with Todd Pletcher now that uh, to his two-year-olds running on the turf is getting to be a real specialty niche for Pletcher. He, he's no longer the trainer that you can say, oh, yeah, it's Pletcher. It's two-year-olds uh, It's two -year -olds on the dirt. It's two-year-olds on the dirt. That, that's not the case anymore. And Mutasabek is, is one of them. He's one of those horses that... Pletcher has gotten to benefit from with the retirement of uh, Kieran McLaughlin, Kieran McLaughlin. Um, and uh, he get, gets Mutasa back. But yeah, that was quite a run uh, in the bourbon. He was dead last, dead last in a field of 11, Brian, um, at Keeneland. And he sat there at the back of the pack for most of the race uh, coming around the turn, the field started to compress a little bit. So he was gaining with when that happened, but he got swung wide, really, really wide, you know, six, seven, eight wide, but uh, he turned it on down the stretch with an impressive turn of foot. Yeah. Mutasa Beck, I, I think for my money, I, I really don't know. I mean, there's some other horses again who could pop up for, for, for my money. He's clearly been the most impressive juvenile turf horse in America. You're right about Todd Pletcher. He's been doing well in these two-year-old turf races now for at least 10 years. And uh, Mutasa back off that win over the, over the turf course at Keeneland certainly will take some beating in the juvenile turf. Uh, this is a mile. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe he would want a little bit more than a mile, but he should be just fine at a mile. He's a son of into mischief after all. But now let's start talking about horses that are not horses that have been running in America because I think he got some big ones and uh, you know when you when you breed warfront to found I guess you're going to expect a good horse and uh, in battleground Matt uh, a, a son of warfront and uh, found it looks like they have a very good horse uh, Aiden O'Brien being the trainer 
Yeah, Brian. And, and if I'm not mistaken, didn't found win at in the Breeders' Cup at Keeneland back in 2015. You are if, correct, sir. If I recall. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Aiden O'Brien, who has got 12 Breeders' Cup victories to his credit, this this uh, son of Warfront uh, is a, was a winner um, last time in a stake at Goodwood. I saw a report that he had, had, had a little bit of a cough last month, so I don't know if that's going to uh, uh, make his trip over to America in question, but I guess we'll see in uh, in a few days when entries are due on Monday. Yeah, and for, for my money, he's been the most impressive uh, possible European to come over for the juvenile turf, and yeah, I, we do expect him to come over. It looks like he's healthy He's still the favorite on the European books over there. So I think that is strong indication that Aiden O'Brien will have this horse if all goes well uh, in the juvenile turf. And I think he's got a big shot. I mean, that breeding uh, has me uh, has me very interested in him. But uh, looking at what he's done over there in Europe, he looks like a horse who makes a lot of sense at one mile, uh, two turns in the juvenile turf. Let's go north of the border, Matt, because uh, a horse, I, I love the name, Gretzky the Great, uh, a son of Nyquist, another Nyquist here. Mark Cassie's trained him, and uh, he's looked awfully good winning on the turf. A big, strong son of Nyquist who looked pretty dominant in winning the summer stakes last time at Woodbine. Yeah, only north of the border in the sense that uh, he has that nice victory uh, in the summer stakes at Woodbine. Of course, it's uh, for Mark Cassie, who has won five Breeders' Cup races since 2015. Uh, um, and of course, Cassie's got, you know, horses all over the place, Kentucky, uh, races in New York, and of course, a big string at Woodbine. So, um, you know, this this horse looked good winning that race, uh, which has always been a major prep for the the juvenile turf. Yeah, and it's one mile just like this. I think this horse looks good at a mile. I'm not sure if he wants to go a heck of a lot longer. Uh, he won a race at Woodbine before that going shorter. Uh, but uh, a physical-looking horse who uh, I'm not sure uh, completely about the competition yet in Canada. But with these juvenile turf horses, it's hard to be sure about any of the competition other than what, what you can see from the horses we're talking about. Gretzky the Great, uh, a, a real interesting horse coming down from Woodbine. And then I, I had to mention another O'Brien horse, uh, Matt. St. Mark's Basilica uh, was very game winning, but he's, he's won a couple now in a row over there. He won uh, the Dewhurst, which is one of their bigger races over there. And uh, he finished strong. Not certain he's coming over, but uh, O'Brien would have a strong hand in this juvenile turf if uh, he brings both Battleground and St. Mark's Basilica. Yeah, and St. Mark's Basilica certainly uh, points out one of the the advantages that the Aiden O'Brien runners sometimes have over the Americans in that uh, he's raced five times already, and generally speaking, uh, um, O'Brien's horses come to the Breeders' Cup with a lot of experience. Yeah, and that often is a helpful thing as they come over for the juvenile turf races. Let's jump right into the Phillies, Matt, on juvenile Phillies on turf. And I think we need to uh, be a little bit more uh, United States centric here because we have some very impressive looking Phillies. Aunt Pearl uh, is a daughter of Lope de Vega who uh, you gotta you gotta see the similarities between newspaper of record, the winner of the Breeders' Cup juvenile Phillies turf two years ago, and this speedy daughter of Lope de Vega. Yes, the, that similarity as newspaper record uh, was when uh, when she was a two year old filly. Uh, this one is, however, trained by Brad Cox, and in uh, Jessamine, she went right to the lead, and at uh, a few different places in the race, uh, turn back challenges. Um, horses tried to get to 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 challenge her. They got to within a half length or so at a couple different spots and down the stretch um, uh, as other challenges seemed to be coming. She just had more in the tank and drew off uh, impressively with a little bit more speed. Yeah. Speedy Philly, uh, same sire as newspaper of record. 
And uh, she looked great in her debut on the turf at Churchill Downs as well. So Aunt Pearl, probably a deserving favorite in the Juveniles Phillies turf, but it doesn't look easy. One of the reasons is that Christophe Clamont trained Plum Ali has been very good as she's bounced from Saratoga to Kentucky Downs back to Belmont. She's three for three and a nice looking young turf fill. Yep, three for three, and most recently uh, with a victory in uh, what was a really nice field in the Miss Grillo at Belmont Park. And and is and is she the one, Brian, that is finally going to give Christophe Clement uh, his first Breeders' Cup victory? Um, probably Clement has you know uh, had his best year overall, even with uh, the craziness that's been going on. Uh, um, Clement has had great, had a great spring meeting at Belmont Park, an even better meeting at Saratoga, uh, led by uh, led by Plum Ali, who's three for three. Yeah, and, and this one, unlike Ann Pearl, she can sit a little bit off the pace, and I think that might become uh, the deciding factor in this race map because we need to talk about another speedy horse who looks like she's going to this race. We're not positive, but Campanelle. Uh, an American in Europe back in America is a very, very fast filly for trainer Wesley Ward, as he it so often has in his barn. And Camp- Campanelle has been super. Uh, she debuted at Gulfstream Park, as many of his horses did this year, unusually because of uh, uh, delays in the Keeneland opening this year. Uh, but then she went over to Ascot and won. Then she went to France and won. So she is well-traveled, world-traveled. She's only sprinted so far. You might ask, well, why is she not going in the turf sprint? Well, Ward has some really strong contenders, uh, certainly pointing for that as well. But I think the thing about Campanelle is who's going to get the lead between who, her and Aunt Pearl and, and how much damage are they going to do to each other's chances in this juvenile Phillies turf? Yeah, Wesley Ward, as we know, uh, uh, does his best work on the turf. Um, especially with uh, especially horses that have a lot of speed, and he's not afraid to ask his young horses to do unusual things. He gets them ready to do unusual things, like you mentioned with Campanelle, uh, three for three, three wins in three different countries. One, two of them in Europe, one of them in Florida. Uh, uh, pretty remarkable uh, accomplishments for a young filly. Yeah, and to this point, it looks like she's going to be stretched out for the mile in the juvenile Phillies turf. And uh, yeah, I think she adds a lot of intrigue to the race. One more filly I really want to mention because I'm kind of high on her. She's got breeding to to get two turns. It's Emro. Uh, Emro, another one of those Brad Cox trainees. She's also undefeated. She started a career in Ellis Park as well. I really liked what I saw, though, when she because at Ellis Park, she ran fast, but she wired the, the debut maiden race. Kentucky Downs, she was able to come from off the pace in a six and a half furlong stakes race there. Looked very impressive doing it. Yeah, and, and that's a nice achievement at Kentucky Downs uh, with the big fields and the un- unusual European style turf course. Uh, um, that showed a lot of maturity in just her second start for uh, Brad Cox, and, and she's going to be a late runner uh, in that field. Yeah, late runner that I like, and 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 Kentucky Downs does add uh, some stamina and foundation to these young horses, and both Emro and Plum Ali have wins at Kentucky Downs. All right, Matt, there's only one more Breeders' Cup race on Future Stars Friday. That's the Juvenile Turf Sprint. Maybe we just talk about one horse. I I, I hate to get too high on a horse after after a single performance. Now, Golden Pal has run. Uh, more than once. In fact, he was second twice. He was second both at Gulfstream, where he was game on the dirt, I believe, uh, getting uh, 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 a game second there where he got run down in a fast race. Then he went over to Ascot, ran a really big race, but got run down, went second there. But then, Matt, his performance in the Skidmore on the turf at Saratoga was was sublime. Yeah, that's for sure. And and uh, talk about a horse that's got a pedigree to be a speedy uh, turf sprinter. Uh, we're talking about Golden Pal here, who is out of the great uh, turf sprinter herself, uh, Lady Shipman. Um, so uh, it it's he's got the Wesley Ward training. He's got the pedigree, 
and 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 he's got just an awesome performance uh in the skidmore last time but you know brian that race was really impressive but there's some other horses on our list here who uh have had some impressive uh, victories also yeah, and, and and it's Wesley Ward, and uh, I, I do have to correct you on one thing, Matt. It's it, it wasn't Lady Schiffman. Uh, his name is Lady Shipman. I, I I thought I thought you tried to sneak in the Shipman there. I tried but to. Yeah, uh, he was super impressive, and and I think he's strictly the horse to beat off that Skidmore in this five and a half furlong turf sprint. A couple of horses coming from Belmont, Matt. Both the Philly and the Colt. Look good doing it. Second of July gets no respect, but he's won both of his starts. He's coming off a win in the Futurity. And, and I thought Royal Approval was quite impressive uh, coming back from Ascot for trainer Wesley Ward and winning the Matrix. Yeah, I guess there's a, I guess there's a little bit of a possibility. Uh, Wesley Ward has talked about uh, Royal Approval, approval possibly going in the Juvenile Phillies turf race. So we'll see when entries come in. Um, second of July, I think is a, is a really nice story for, uh, trainer Phil Gleaves, who, um, was an assistant trainer back in the day for the great Woody Stevens, and then had to take some time off from full-time, uh, training to, uh, to raise his son and was down in Florida. And now he's back in New York, uh, with a full-time stable. And it's good to see a talented, uh, trainer like Phil Gleaves have a quality horse like second of July, who was two for two in his career, in her yeah. career, in his career. Excuse me. Sorry, Matt. I liked his sire, Jack Milton, another young sire, yeah. uh, quite a bit, uh, running one turn on the turf. Son of uh, Jack Milton, like I said, he didn't get bed in either his maiden or this uh, futurity, but uh, he he waited for room. He moved out, and uh, it was a nice win in the futurity, one that makes me think he has a shot as as royal approval. Yeah, we're so not 100% sure Wesley Ward, Campanelle, royal approval, could flip-flop races or could both end up in the same race, but right now we think our best guess is Campanelle running at the mile and royal approval sticking in sprints. Miss Amulet, uh, Matt, is a, a European that I want to talk about because I love the way she finished her last race over there in Europe. She looks like a very nice sprinter. And uh, and who else? Uh, Bodenheimer. Uh, Bodenheimer has the win over the track, having won at Keeneland in the Indian summer. Either those two strike you as big threats to Golden Pal's obvious favoritism in this juvenile turf sprint. They're interesting contenders in this race, uh, but like you said, Brian, if uh, Golden Pal turns out to be as good as that uh, Skidmore uh, performance, um, they might be fighting for second. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. I, I don't like to be on the favorite, but I am on the favorite in the juvenile turf sprint. Wow, Matt, we did we covered a lot. Uh, future starts Friday. Five really exciting races coming up two weeks from today. Breeders' Cup Friday at Keeneland. Two weeks from today, we did the juvenile, the juvenile fillies, juvenile turf, juvenile turf fillies, and the juvenile turf sprint. Wow, that's a mouthful. But I got through it, and it's just so good to be back with you after a couple weeks off doing Horse Center. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Absolutely. And I do want to say that it is great to have our friend Brett Workman back and feeling better and uh, doing the show. Uh, I think, Brian, what do we have planned coming up for the fans? Uh, a, a show about the classic coming up, which is shaping up to be one of the most contentious classics that we've had uh, in a long, long time. We'll have our uh, our picks and our suggested wagers show. What else we got coming up, Brian? Oh yeah, you. I think you. I think you nailed it, Matt. Uh, next Wednesday, we're we're doing Breeders' Cup Classic, and I'm excited about this Breeders' Cup Classic more so than a lot of recent classics. You're right; it's a good looking field of older horses and three year olds. So we'll talk about that Wednesday. Uh, we're also going to do two shows on Breeders' Cup Week highlighting uh, our top picks and our suggested wagers for both Breeders' Cup days. Got to talk about the Distaff and so many good races, as always, to talk about in the Breeders' Cup. As always, we want to thank you for watching, folks. We appreciate it. Tune in every week, and Matt and I will be back now every week, and even more so as we get ready for the Breeders' Cup. If you haven't yet hit that subscribe button here on our YouTube channel, Horse Racing Nation, please do so. Now, we also want to thank our sponsor, 
the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. Folks, we'll be back next Wednesday. Breeders' Cup Classic previewed. Matt and I are back. It's good to be back. We'll see you then.